Hi, welcome to the next on our series of mini lectures on photonic topies, topics. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today isn't necessarily a part of the spectrophotometer system, but rather noise, uh, one of the things that affects our measurements. As we uh, generate light, collect it, um, filter it, and put it onto a detector, of course we'd like the response of our detector to be absolutely proportional to the amount of light that's collected. Unfortunately, it's not. Um, besides the signal or voltage or current that comes out of the detector, and for the detectors we've talked about its current, uh, we have small fluctuations in the amount of current, shown by the sort of jaggedy line I'm drawing here. And of course, if we amplify the signal out of the detector, that noise is amplified as well. And this can become a, a major, major effect on our measurement. In fact, it limits our measurements to a very large extent, and that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is make sure we know what we're talking about when we talk about noise, because noise is spectrally dependent. The amount of noise you have is a function of frequency, as is shown in this graph here. And this may be a little hard to see the scale, but what we're looking at is logarithmic frequency scales and log logarithmic noise spectral power. So let's go ahead and, and note that this horizontal axis is in terms of frequency, or hertz, and that the noise spectral power, the y-axis, is given by watts per hertz. How many watts of noise power there are in a uh, given bandwidth of hertz. And we've seen this before in our mini lecture on uh, spectral sources. And if you're not familiar with this, you should go back and watch this. And so a frequency of 1 hertz is shown right here. Uh, this line, and let me get another color so it shows up a little bit better here. Let's choose red to begin with. This is one day. This is one second. Uh, a frequency of a megahertz is right here. And you'll notice there are a couple general trends about this noise spectrum. The smaller the frequency, the slower things occur, the more noise you have. Um, and as you get to higher and higher frequencies, generally the amount of noise decreases. Uh, notice that you do have certain noise sources. Power lines, cathode rays or television tubes, AM radio, FM radio, and radar sources. As you go to increasing frequencies, it can add a lot more noise to your measurements if you just happen to be measuring at the wrong frequency. Now, the total amount of noise we have, and let's choose another color pen right here, the total amount of noise we have, of course, is just given in watts. So let's write that our noise is, of course, given in watts. And that's given by the noise spectral power we have in watts per square root of hertz times the bandwidth of our measurement, delta F. So if we look at a narrow range of frequencies, we're going to see and let's go ahead and write this. The curve times delta F gives us the total amount of noise. And that means if we look at a narrow range of frequencies, if delta F is small, we're going to measure less noise than if we try to look at a very broad range of frequencies. Um, and this is important. And I'm going to go into a, a slight digression here to try to explain some of the, the noise terms we see. The noise power, we know, is in watts per hertz. Um, and this is simply the current noise times the voltage noise, because voltage times current equal power. And of course, you can use Ohm's law to get I squared over R, V squared R, things like that. But when we talk about current noise and voltage noise, as we will in the next slide, what are the units of that? Well, it turns out that current noise is always given in terms of amps per square root of hertz. And voltage noise is always given in terms of volts per square root of hertz. So that you multiply these things together, you get the current unit of watts per hertz. And it can be very confusing to think about noise in terms of square root of hertz measurement because just what the heck is a square root of hertz anyway? And what it means, essentially, is that the amount of current or voltage noise you have is a function of the square root of this bandwidth delta f of a measurement, or how broad a spectral window you're looking for. 
but we'll see some applications of that later. Okay, there are three types of noise that I want to cover very briefly. The first is Johnson noise, and this is due to thermal fluctuations within uh, materials, mainly resistors. Uh, it increases with the temperature, T, the bandwidth delta F, and the resistance R. That term K in the equation of the voltage noise from Johnson noise is Boltzmann's constant. And so you see that all of this depends essentially as the square root of resistance, temperature, and the bandwidth of the measurement. Another type of noise is called shot noise, and this is due to the finite nature of electrons charge of electron charge. You may have billions of electrons going through a resistor, but that number is not constant any times. So you may have a few million more or a few million less at any instant in time. And so this type of noise, shot noise, which is a current noise, it depends on the charge on an electron Q, which is, of course, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, the amount of electrons, number of electrons flowing, or the current I, and also the bandwidth of the measurement, delta F. And again, you see the square root dependence on all of these. Another type of noise that I really don't want to go into, into detail is what's called 1 over F noise. And if you look at the, the amount of noise in terms of, again, volts per square root of hertz, you see that 1 over F noise is much greater at low frequencies, below a frequency of about 300 hertz, and then becomes flat and contributes a constant amount at higher frequencies. Uh, what this says is that if you do measurements at high frequencies, you tend to get less noise from this source than you would. And remember, the frequency of the measurement, F, is different than the bandwidth of the measurement delta F. You can do a high frequency measurement over a very, very narrow band of frequencies, as I'm trying to draw right here. 